Hello everyone, welcome to Doom 2016. I told you we'd be doing this and after some hiatus, we are doing it. I am on the we're about to start the game part of the game. I have decided that maybe, I don't know how difficult this game is going to be. Um, I have played the first mission and I've decided that probably we're just going to go with the... Uh, let's try this for now because when we did the nightmare mode in original Doom, we gave up after one episode and I probably didn't... Now I think about it, even upload that episode. So if this goes horribly wrong, you lot will never see it. And if this turns out to be pretty okay, they I guess we'll find out. Um, let's mercy. listen to this. But you, you will be worse. Rip and tear until it is done. So in this uh, game, I have done this first mission here already. Um, we appear to start off tied to a stone slab and completely capable of smashing a nymph's head with one hand. So we're pretty stacked to begin with. I don't think we really need any strength or health upgrades right now, but I'm just going to get rid of these uh, couple of early enemies. And I hope you'll forgive me for doing this on camera, but I'm going to change some of the settings. Because in... Uh, I don't know if you can see this on YouTube because, of course, the way that um, the the renderer works to compress this video is that it's going to possibly um, just remove a lot of what I'm seeing, which is uh, a film grain, which looks really cool when you're playing it here. But if it's not even going to be visible, uh, I'm suspecting that maybe there's no point in doing it. Where is it now? Uh, I did put colorblind mode on when I previously tried it, but um, that didn't seem to help very much. That's fine. Uh, we're going to try and turn down... Here we go, film go. I'm going to turn it off, basically. Um, simply because all it can do is make this video, which I'm making, bigger on my disc and make me run out of disc more quickly. Uh, I've got it on ultra quality. All of this seems to work perfectly well, despite it being a Bethesda game. But uh, otherwise, I think we are... Okay. Yes, please. So uh, we'll go back and continue. So we start off, this is very much like Doom 3 in that you uh, start off just dumped in the game and there is lore as you go along. But um, we'll discover a few things about the game. Like I say, I've only done this first mission so far. So we're going to push this button. We're going to watch this man. Some sort of holographic recording of a previous thing. Ooh, while I think about it, um, it's possible that we might be able to get subtitles. There we go. This will help you lot, and possibly me, understand what's happening, because... Have to contain this. Olivia Pierce. So now we know who that person is. Something has happened in this room, which has been recorded by... I don't know, some base recording software somewhere. Uh, and there's a lot of blood everywhere, so this is cool. So, as I keep trying to mention to you, I have um, played this mission. This first level, I'm expecting all these jump scares that I'm calmly talking about so that you, uh, yourselves, don't have too much of a heart attack or high blood pressure as a result of watching this first episode. Um, and I happen to know that we're going to learn that this thing here is called the Doom Marine Armor or something similar to that. Domimon Demonic Invasion in Progress is a very nice uh, diagnostic status for any computer to have. It reminds me very much of the uh, printer on fire error that used to be in the Linux slash BSD kernels back in the day. The satellite dish array is offline, as it was in Doom 3. Um, and we are currently on some unknown place. Now, I believe we are actually on Mars, based on the fact that when we started the game there, um, there was a picture of Mars, and of course you can have a satellite around Mars. I think we can work together and resolve this problem in a way that benefits us both. So that man did not sound particularly um, human at that point. There's a lot of gross here, but well, I'll, I'll explain what I think is going on as we find the law that I think tells us about it. So you can, um, here we go, there's a codex, reminds you about stuff, glory kills. <laughs> um, you can press F to perform a glory kill. Including from above to form different glory, and they always drop health, which is cool. So when they're glowing like this, we can do this shit, and that drops health. 
So I'm going to be doing this a lot, so try not to get too disorientated. Also, if you press F and you've not got a glory kill, it does a melee hit, which is kind of nice. So I did actually apparently take some damage that I wasn't expecting to take. So this stuff is called the the mission tab. Okay, thank you. Um, our armor. Ooh. I didn't actually press tab before, so unless this has changed, that's pretty cool. It's um, been a long time since a video game actually had a map. I appreciate the fact that they managed to get a map into uh, this new Doom. Ooh. Because it makes it so much more like the original Doom. It was very... It was almost a key feature of the early id games that um, that we we had the map always available to us and they sort of disappeared for the longest time um, when games became truly 3D and this is a Bethesda game so you know half expecting it to uh, die halfway through but I'm not hearing bad things about this. Here we go. The Praetor suit. Um, additional relics were found in the tomb alongside the Doom Marine so there is a tomb that we've opened it had the Doom Marine in it some incantation tablets and an ancient combat suit which was given the name the Praetor suit. So I'll let you read this pause the video if you want to and read it on your own time um, but it kind of seems to me like we have found the person that we were playing as in the original Doom games. There's no need for this melodrama, mate. So there's our new imps. Very similar to the Doom 3 imps, which I really appreciated, because I thought Doom 3 did really well on the old imp um, concept. These things were not here when I last... Um, played the game because I think I did it on an easier difficulty. Basically, I wanted to simply test the um, the recording, so I didn't make it too difficult for myself. But this thing here is now going to cause a lot of imps to spawn because they are not happy with us having destroyed their nest over here. Oh, not appreciating this. We might have to. Switch weapons to one that I uh, don't like. So another thing that has possibly been... I'm not, I've read some of the lore that we've picked up as we played along. And I'm not sure whether we're expecting this. Because... Ow. What hit me? Something that um, made me wonder when we first got into this place was... Okay. <laughs> actually really hurt. Um, was that it said demonic invasion in progress. Like that was nothing to, to really concern ourselves about, uh, and yet in any real world scenario I think a demonic invasion in progress would not really be something that I put into the software, which means the software is essentially expecting this so let's go part of me suspects that we are actually already in hell, I feel like Union Aerospace have already found a way into the hell um demonic presence can not save you the hell layer, the hell stratum of uh, of the hell dimension, let's call it. And um, all of these things are basically contingencies about exactly this very thing happening here that have actually happened. So we managed to get ourselves to full health in doing that. You can charge up a shot, but you have to wait for it. Um, which doesn't necessarily help anybody. We want to take these. I assume that the shotgun is two. It is. And then we're going to open this and then... All this crap's going to happen again. And this time we're not going to get hit in the face with a fireball. If we can possibly avoid it. Thank you very much. Oh, hello. So it's a very twitchy game. I appreciate that though. Um, we're going to try and leave this HP on the ground. I do not believe it despawns. And you can run a certain distance before you have to... Uh, in order to perform your glory kill to get your HP back in the first place, so. I'm not quite sure whether that involves going up walls and stuff, though. It's a bit like Isaac in 3D. There's lots of things throwing um, fireballs at us, and you have to do amazing dodges in order to actually not die. I don't think you get to deal with the devil if you don't take any health, any uh, damage or anything. So the fact that the whole system is basically expecting this demonic uh, invasion to happen and there's a lockdown and all this crap implies to some extent that, you know, this was expected. Unfortunately, it was not... Uh,
expected well enough that there's actually people to help, but... I mean, it could have been going on for a long time. I, I really don't know. We could have been resurrected for some reason. But I don't know why we woke up. We were just put here. I keep hearing a chainsaw. This is uh, particularly pesky because, of course, we don't have very much ammo. I'd like to... Uh, I'd like my shotgun to be a little bit better than it currently is. 6 HP. You can also climb onto things, which I think is really helpful. Because the number of times I've played games, I've been like, why can't you just grab onto that edge? Can I reach you? I have to basically know. Uh, I was wondering if there was some sort of parkour-like teleport ability that we were going to get by having a glory kill in a hard-to-reach place, but that didn't happen. Let's grab this HP. We have got some shotgun ammo. You don't have to reload, which is confusing me because I've been playing Fallout 4 for some time recently. Um, so yeah, here we are. This is Doom 2016. It's a little bit framey actually on my machine, which was not the case before, so I hope that's not showing up too badly on the good old YouTubes, but I'm using OBS Studio rather than OBS itself because I finally decided to just bite the bullet and see how well it does. I find it very difficult to configure, which is my problem. Only 20, 20 spaces for shells. So I'm assuming that this is... I don't know why they're being played to us. Um, <coughs> but I'm assuming that that is some holographic recording of something that happened in the past. 24 hours. You must understand. Our interest in their world was purely for the betterment of mankind. Everything has clearly gotten out of hand now, yes. But it was worth the risk. I assure you. So that's our first mission. It sounds to me like this Samuel Hayden person has intentionally opened the portal to hell to try and get something on the pretext of trying to improve mankind, probably for study or something like that. But in fact, it sounds to me like he knew exactly what he was doing and he, he was already possessed. I mean, that's what I would do if I was... Uh, if I was the devil and I had discovered that there were people on Mars and maybe they shouldn't be or maybe this was my perfect opportunity, I would possess someone of high rank Somehow I managed to get into this world, otherwise that would happen. Or maybe just the fact that we turned up gave the devil this opportunity. Um, we possess somebody of high rank, and then... Environments. Uh, you possess somebody of high rank, and then use them as a pretext to open the hell gate so that you could actually come through in... Uh, like, f for real. Gornest, studies of demons upon entering this dimension have shown that their conduct is not purely vindictive. There's a method behind their actions. So, this explains that these Gornests, and we have entered this dimension, so this is what implies to me that we're already in hell for some reason. However, um, this current, I mean, we don't, we don't need that. This current, um, like, this looks like either hell or Mars. <laughs> yeah, either. These things are the same, but we've got Earth gravity, but I don't know if... So that's the one thing about Doom itself, is that you had Earth, gra Earth gravity. You'd be able to jump a lot higher in actual Mars. Lol. You're dead. You are dead. Okay, good. Uh, I've actually played this level because there's an arcade mode, which I think is supreme. Because having an arcade mode that allows you to... Um, just fuck about in a level for as long as you really like. With a purpose, you know, you're fighting against... I've got my brother on Steam, and it tells me his high score, so it's almost like single-player competitive, which is really cool. And this is um, the first level that you can play in that mode. Uh, and you get the opportunity to just bugger around and shoot the crap out of loads of things for as long as you possibly want to. And there's things to collect and all that sort of stuff, and it's great. Oh. I don't know what you fired at me, but I do not appreciate it. Get a bit closer in there. Give ourselves a chance of using this shotgun properly. Don't really like shotguns in most games, to be quite fair with you, because the spread on them is almost universally, universally a terrible idea. Like, it's really punishing in many situations, unless you're right up next to the, uh, the actual enemy. You're going to have a bad time. Also, uh, we can try kill shots from different directions. Not kill shots, glory kills. 
from different directions if we can use our um, terrain to our advantage here. But so far, I've just been grabbing him by the arm and punching him in the face, which, you know, I cannot really fault as a uh, method of execution. But I also, som now, I also sometimes wonder if we can be tagged while Glory Kill executing something else. I would like some ammo. I wonder if I've been accidentally not min-maxing ammo because... Why? Get down from there. Um, you know, I could be accidentally running over shotgun shells without even realising. There are only 20 in those. One second. There we go. So, uh, again, I don't really know how many shells there were in one of those things, but... Die. That was cool. I'm a fan of that. Uh, so yeah, I've played this on the good old arcade mode, which is super cool, um, a couple of times to try and get some decent value out of it, but I don't really know where I'm going. I don't know what it looks like in single player, that's for sure. These are only six. I think that's a feature of ultra hard mode. We have died once already, but that was just brain farm more than anything. And I was intrigued by the fact that this seemed to be glowing, but it doesn't necessarily seem like it is anymore. That looks like a companion cube, if I'm being... 100% honest with you, but I'm guessing that it isn't. And down here we have nothing of interest. All right, cool. Let's move on. I guess I'm going up there. You have to be a little bit faster in um, arcade mode because the more kills you get, the more your score multiplier goes up. And as you wander around dithering, then um, that goes down again. But they don't remove anything, which is interesting. I recall um, making maps in Unreal. Unreal. Uh, Unreal Tournament didn't really have a single player mode except for the versus bots. Uh... Or even Quake, for that matter. Quake 2. And you would play a single-player map in Deathmatch mode, and they would remove things. They'd leave doors open and things like that. But in uh, Arcade mode, you actually have to waste that time. Well, I consider it a waste because, of course, the time was spent. What is this? Frag grenade. How do I use these? That would be actually very useful. Press left control or middle mouse. Use the equipment item when you have it available. We can only use it so often. Cycle through available equipment with F2 and F1. Secrets. Explore the environment to find secret areas. Weapon upgrade points. So, as mentioned, this is a super arcadey game. And it actually has weapon upgrade points. Like, you will literally just upgrade your weapon. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's completely arbitrary. It just allows you to. The Lazarus wave exposure does not does effectively wipe any vestige of human behavior from most of its victims. Some subjects... While, while Lazarus... Some subjects continue to display tactical cognizance post posthumously. As with possessed engineers, this does not appear to be random. If an individual has training in combat as part of the USC military, the Lazarus Wave event will transform them into more than mere. So the Lazarus Wave appears to be something to do with um, how to get into the Hellmouth. Um, but this appears to have adverse effects on certain people. I have no points, but... You know, I can spend one at some point if I want to. These upgrades, so let's see what we can do. I have zero, but it says I've got one. So I can decrease explosive barrel and environment damage taken. I'm not allowed to actually spend any, but that's okay. Uh, we can reduce the tr charge duration so we can use our grenades more often. And what do we have here? Weapon upgrade points. So this is what we're looking for. This is what the other thing told us about. We can find these in uh, secret areas. So this is what we've got equipped. We can decrease the charge it takes to time up power up a charge energy shot. The shotgun I believe also has a right mouse. It doesn't, you can't use it right now. Um, when you play on arcade mode, you basically have all of the upgrades already unlocked. I'm wondering if it told me about secrets because I missed one. I mean, that's kind of satisfying. Especially in three dimensions. Um, yeah, the... Uh, the arcade mode on this doesn't actually remove any of the single player stuff, but it does augment you with the ability to impact compensation. Yes, please. I appreciate that. Uh, you can have all the weapons unlocked, all the weapon what's names unlocked already. We're going to make as much HP on the ground as we can, because if we don't... Ooh, what did I just win? I don't know. Um, because if we don't have as many uh, HP upgrades on the ground as we can, we are going to die because I'm bad at the game. I'm not sure what I'm picking up here, but maybe appreciate them? We do have low ammo, 
So what are these things? Checkpoint. Don't know. The checkpoints are also really cool because obviously reloading from previous checkpoint is basically save scumming, but the game has given me the save scum ability, so I'm not worried. <laughs> it doesn't make me feel bad. What's happening here? Oh, that's just swinging. Honestly, I thought they were actually doing stuff right here. Kind of running low on the old ammunition majigger here. Ah, I see. It's actually dropped a couple of ammo for us. So, when that thing dropped that looked like an ammo symbol, it was an ammo symbol. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure. Maybe you just have to pay attention? I don't know. Let's press this. Map data ready. Let's download that. We can now unlock area scanning technology. And we have an auto map. So, I don't think I've pressed tab in arcade mode. So, we are over here. What is this? There's probably an armor upgrade of some description. It looks like the armor upgrade tab. So, we'll head over there and see if we can figure out what it is and how to pick it up. That'd be an armor upgrade then. That's why it looks like that. Here we go. So now we can start doing this. I suspect that upgrading the equipment system uh, cost us two. Honestly, don't care. Let's buy what we can. Yes. Self-preservation. Decrease weapon self-damage. Yeah, that sounds like me. So we're going to need that at some point. So that was an armor token. We found it from someone else's armor, which doesn't make me feel too good. But Elite Guard. The Elite Guard is a company of security personnel charged with protecting the Lazarus Project research and maintaining order throughout the Argent facility. Their distinct red uniforms help still... Okay, so everyone's supposed to be calm because there's red people walking around. So, yeah, dead members of Olivia's Elite Guard. So Olivia appears to be some uh, high-ranking person whose Elite Guard is important. Yeah, I'll go down here. Impact compensation. Mm. I don't know if that's strictly necessary every single time, so... um. Not sure whether I should be worried about the fact I had to use it or not. Please die. Thank you. Oh, yeah, we can get tagged while beating the shit out of somebody else. Please turn around. I heard another one. Where are you? There you are. So this game, they teleport in at random. You don't have to look for the uh, little tubes that mean that they wake up and spawn from a different part of the world. Um... Yeah, it looks like they're dropping things that I can just take. Low ammo doesn't fill me entirely full of confidence. I'm guessing that's the uh, balance of the early game here. Or the difficult game, not the early game. It is early game, but whatever. This has been a look in... What is this going to be? This has been a look into Doom 2016, which I honestly think looks pretty rad. I love the way it is so arcadey and so easy to just beat the crap out of things with pushing buttons. I really want to go in here if you don't mind. And how easy it is to just get lost. Let's use our map. Why the hell not? So there's nothing, there's something over there, but I do not think that we want to worry about jumping down and hurting ourselves necessarily. Um, I guess that means we've picked it up. We picked that up. So we want to go over there. How do we go over there? Maybe we do just jump across that place. I was reluctant to try and jump across that bridge because it looked too difficult, but maybe we can. We're already running, so... We did manage it. Okay. Now, what was that robot that flew away? Is that one of ours? Combat support drone. Use a loadout scan. Displaying available... So we can... Buy this for our shotgun. That's really cool. So we've just... Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. We just uh, beat up a combat drone and stole its upgrades, allowing us to now have a explosive shot for our shotgun, which is just right click. So be careful not to... Um... There we go. So it looks like you zoom in to prime the explosive shot and then release it. You don't accidentally just explosive shot all over your mama. Why are these people got BFGs? I don't, I don't like that. Help. Gonna have to do that to you, even though it puts me in a little bit of danger because I need the HP and I'm kind of gambling on the fact that doing a glory kill to get the HP is not gonna make me worse off when I come out of the glory kill. Man, calling it a glory kill sounds so lewd. 
I'm trying not to say glory hole all the time, but it's really, really difficult. The trouble is with this game is I can't talk about the old technology and the way it used to work and the fact that I've made all these maps and stuff. It's like... I think you can fire that when it's um, half cocked, so that's pretty okay. Got some decent HP back from all of that as well. We have got four shotgun shells. I would like more. So we're going to be on the lookout for plenty of those combat drones if we can find them, because they are the way to weapon upgrades without having to find weapon upgrade tokens, which is um, slightly more... Like, there's got to be a way, a name for when... So some games like this have arbitrary things like... Please. You motherfucker. You trapped me in the corner. That's a Bethesda game right there. Um, some games are just like, here's a token, go nuts, you've got a thing, upgrade yourself. Enjoy. Other games um, seem to prefer to... Oh, I thought that was bad things happening. It may be. Uh, other games prefer to put in the environment the things that you're going to pick up, which is at 20. That's about what we need. That looks um, far, so we'll avoid getting blown off the edge. Again, getting blown off with the glory kill. Um, other games prefer to make it actually something part of the environment that you collect. E.g., in this one, there are... You, you pull the armor token out of someone else's... Some dead guy's armor. And, and they try and... Include it in the environment. They try and make it fit, right? Whereas other games, it's like, here's a thing that's dropped. So you can walk over it to pick it up, and then you have that thing well done. This game seems to be halfway between. You can... Oh, God. Um, you can pick things up. And use them to upgrade yourself, but they do seem to have some relevance to what's going on. Like, they seem to fit in the lore. I guess they seem to be on on uh, theme. They seem to be thematic to the game. Die, damn it! Man, having not much ammo is not helpful. Kill it. Good. Got some HP back. Um, where? Oh. Maybe I should have used a grenade at some point. <laughs> Just thinking I have all these extra skills and I'm not really using them. Any ammo here? Yes. We did pick up that armor as well. So, like, that big armor thing was just an arbitrary floating, spinning thing that was armor shape, and as a result, you now have more armor. Brilliant. Whereas the armor upgrades are a little bit more specific to what's going on. I.e., you find them on other people's armor and you use other people's armor to upgrade your armor. So actually finding armor points, just if there's a floaty thing and you picked up the floaty thing. Which is very, um, that felt good. That felt pretty good too. Okay, you can have another one. Do I have any more? Don't know if that worked. Oh, my grenade cooldown is really long. It's also pretty difficult to see. It took me ages to actually realize it was there. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, low health, I get it. It's alright. We're managing. So these glory kills are a little bit like... Um, I've been watching Northern Line and Avac play Dead Cells recently. It's still cooling down. Wow. Uh, and in that, if you take some damage, then you have a period of time in which to damage enemies. And when you do that, you recover some of the health you just lost. It's difficult to recover 100% of the health you just lost, but you can... And you do that by um, having something with lifesteal on it, basically. It is possible to hit them hard enough that you basically get back all the HP that you just lost. This seems very similar, except you have to get them fully deaded, and then... don't like this sound. Oh, help. Pressing the wrong buttons. And then glory kill them at the glory hole. Which is working out okay for me right now, but I'm not sure I can keep this up. Again, a bit of a lewd way of saying something that 
should be nice and simple. So we've got full shotgun ammo. I'm hoping that at some point in the future we're going to be able to find some way of increasing our capacity for these things. So over here in the arcade mode, there's a little thing that's floating in the sky to pick up, which is like an extra life or something. Uh, it looks like a chibi version of yourself, which is both cool and weird at the same time. They don't really give a shit about what you think in the design of this game. Like, it all matches. It's all pretty good. Quite colourful as well, which is strange for a, an id game. That's that's not fair. Strange for a Bethesda game. Um, but they they just there's a lot of it's quirky. Okay, they they take inspiration from different styles, it seems, and sort of merge them all together and colour them in so that they look like they're part of the same one big style. And there's that exact same alarm that's in every single game ever made. It must be a free soundbite or something. Definitely want to search around here for secrets and super secrets, because if we can find some more upgrades early on, that's going to be great. Nothing in here. And honestly, we should be using the map a little bit more. So there's 25 armor in a thing that just looked like a weird armor plate. And the last time I found one of those, it was floating and spinning. So that must be our goal. It does say objective, but it seems like it's a little bit cheating if it's actually going to tell us exactly where it is. Something's unavailable. I'm not sure what my challenges are. I wonder if that pauses the game. I'm assuming it does, but it didn't in the original Doom. And it wouldn't surprise me if it doesn't in this game as well, because... Seems like a, a way of increasing difficulty, and a fairly obvious one would be simply to make it so that you, if you are in the map, then your character is considered to be in the map. Hello. Not sure if this counts as an accident in your book. So this is the actual entrance to the actual UAC. And just like every other game in the universe, there is an airlock which takes you from one level to the other, except for Half-Life. And Fallout. It's weird in Fallout because doors. <laughs> doors are the things that transition you. And you never actually see the other side of a door. Okay, that is a uh, pretty good, excuse me, pretty good length of an episode in my opinion. So thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying the game. I'm hoping that I'll get a little bit more into it and a little bit better and die a few more times for your uh, enjoyment in the future. But if you enjoyed this one, do remember to leave a like and go check out the other videos that we have on the channel because there are other people contributing to this channel, uh, including me, even though, obviously, for the past few weeks, I haven't. Maybe it seemed like I went away. So, see you soon. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.